Hello and welcome back to RC Model Reviews, another techie video today. I'm going to be talking about something called CPPM or sometimes it's just called PPM for lazy people that drop the C. Basically what it means is the way your receiver spits out the information needed by the servos, the flight controller or whatever else you've got connected to its outputs. Now normally on most receivers we have one connector for each channel. So there's a channel 1 connector, channel 2 connector, etc, etc. So each servo is plugged independently into the receiver to the corresponding channel. Simple as, that's the way we've done it for many many years. But now we have something called CPPM or PPM. And that means that for things like flight controllers and multi-rotors, all you need is one single servo lead from the receiver to the flight controller board rather than one lead for each channel. This makes the wiring so much easier and it's just you know really really convenient. So how does this PPM output work? Well I'm going to show you in this video. Here I have a rather old and tired FreeSky 4 channel. It's the D4R-2 receiver. There it is. And these receivers are brilliant. They're great. They've got twin antennas for diversity. They're full range receivers. That you can use them as a 4 channel receiver with 4 separate servo outputs, 4 channel outputs. Or, or by jumpering pins 3 and 4 down here, you can actually turn them into a receiver that outputs a single PPM stream on channel 1, which is what it's doing now. I've got the jumper in place, and over here I've connected my oscilloscope to the output of channel 1, and if we go to the oscilloscope screen, you can see what that looks like. And indeed, here we are. Now, if we take a look at this, what we have with something to point with, here's something to point with, here we have a big long pulse which is called the sync pulse. The reason we have that pulse is because, well, if we just had a stream of pulses like this, we're where each one corresponds to a particular channel, then we wouldn't know where to start because this information is coming down. If I wind this down, you'll see it's actually a big stream of such pulses. You see there's all this, it's a continuous flow of pulses out of the receiver. So if you didn't have this big gap here, you wouldn't know where to start numbering the channels from. So that's called the sync pulse. And to do it syncing, excuse me while I come back here, it has to be longer than the rest. And that poses a bit of a problem sometimes, especially with some of these little free sky receivers. The amount of time from one sync, the start of one sync pulse to the start of the next one is called a frame. I'll just get rid of that menu, we don't need that cluttering up the screen. Um, yeah, this period of time from there to there is called a frame and it's typically you know, around about 20 milliseconds or 1 50th of a second. It varies a bit depending on the gear and the number of channels you're using. So what this basically means is that we have um, the sync pulse, all the other pulses have to fit in there and then another sync pulse. And that poses a bit of a problem because sometimes if you've got eight channels, as we've got here, then something rather interesting happens. Now, I'm going to show you what happens when I move the sticks. This is my channel one. You notice that first pulse after the sync pulse actually gets narrower and it gets wider. But you also notice that the sync pulse itself changes length because there's not enough room for a sync pulse that's as long. If you make one of the other pulses wider, well, the extra space has to come from somewhere and it comes from the width of the sync pulse. Now also when I move channel 2, the second pulse becomes wider and narrower. And the same goes for channel 3, there we go, channel 3 and channel 4. There are also other channels, I've got this other channel on a switch. You can see that changes in length too, so if we make all the pulses to their minimum length, you'll see that, oh it's the wrong way, make them to the minimum length, like so. You can see the sync pulse can be really really wide. But conversely, if we switch everything to the longest length, then the sync pulse has now become almost indistinguishable from the other pulses. And I'm only using five channels. These other pulses here aren't used at the moment. I have, they're set to a medium level. So if I was to make all these pulses as wide as they could be, the sync pulse would effectively just become another pulse. And the gear you've got plugged into your receiver wouldn't know how to start numbering the channels. And that's why in the case of the free sky receivers, sometimes it's a bit of a problem and you have to reflash them with software that enables it to have a longer total frame length. That's from the start of one sync pulse to the start of the next. That period is expanded so that you can have all the channels to full width without losing the uniqueness of your sync pulse. But there's another way. If you are flying um, one of these D4R2 receivers, say in a multi-rotor with a CCPM um, capable flight controller, then here's what I do. I'll just change models on here and you have to excuse because I've got telemetry set up and no voltage input. So this is going to start making a noise and ruining the video. But I go to this model here, select model. And switch, warning. switch warnings. Oh, here we go. Um, it's going to bitch at me all the time. But you'll notice something now. 
here we are, we're back. We've, I'll just move this along so we can see where our sync pulse starts. You'll notice that these last three, last two pulses, especially last three pulses here, are quite narrow. And the sync pulse is really long. Now if I go to the full, full width of all my other channels, you notice the sync pulse I've got full, and we just switch on there, there we go. The sync pulse is still longer than any of the other channels, so it can still be recognized. I'm using five channels, with all five channels set to the maximum pulse width, I still have a wide enough sync pulse to be recognized as being unique. Now, I've done that by setting the output of the last three channels to the minimum that they can go to, which is one millisecond. And I've done that on the Tyrannus, there's a, a particular mix you can put in with a source called Max. So you set those channels to Max, and then you invert them so they become minimum. I'll show you how to do that in another video if you like. But basically what I'm saying is, you don't have to reflash your D4R2 receiver to avoid the issues with a frame that's too short. If you are only using five channels, and you set the other three channels to become as narrow as possible, then you still get the nice big fat wide sync pulse, and the whole system works as planned. So yeah, something to be wary of, something to be careful of, but if people want to see it, I'll show you how to reflash your D4R2 receivers and your other FreeSky receivers to use a longer frame for all the data. So it all fits in, even when you've got all the channels wound up with maximum width on the pulses. So there you go, that's one of the problems with CPPM, and, but that's what CPPM looks, CPPM looks like when you throw it on an oscilloscope. If you've got any questions, any comments, let me know. I'll do my best to answer them. And in the meantime, I shall be getting back to this thing, the bench.